Radhe Radhe everyone. So we are continuing to read from the Saints of Raj and last time we just arrived uh, out of the story of Pandit Sri Ram Krishna Das Babaji. So we just continue from from there. I think on the Did you take the question? I remember seventy two. Sign was so this is just the last Ah here. Oh, oh my god. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> no, I lost it. Okay. I lost. No problem, we just I think seventy two, yeah also. I remember eight and eight. So I will just read the and remember. And mm. Yeah, okay, we are about to say. Yeah? No? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let's start from here. Yeah. One day, when Baba was doing bhajan inside the cave, a poisonous snake crawled over his body and coiled around his chest and neck. But he continued his bhajan undisturbed. After some time, the snake crawled down and disappeared. At night, Baba heard a voice. Someone said, you leave this cave. Immediately Baba left the cave and began to live in Sham Kuti, near Kusum Sarovar. Pandit Baba never gave Diksha to anyone, but many people who received instructions from him in Bhajan regarded him as their Shiksha Guru. Important among these were Sri Goranga Dasji, Sri Priya Sharan Dasji, Sri Kripasindu Dasji, Sri Vishnu Dasji, Sri Keshav Dasji, and Sri Lalit Mohan Goswami. There were also some who, although never initiated by anyone, regarded him alone as their guru. As for example, Thakur Kushal Sina of Gijagara. Goranga Das Babaji, whose former name was Dhirendranath Chakravarti, and who was the son of a rich landlord of Calcutta and a brilliant student of Scottish Church College, Calcutta, renounced the word at the age of 20. He took Diksha from Siddha Sri Ram Das Babaji Maharaj of Calcutta and came to Vrindavan in Vrindavan, he began to do bhajan under the guidance of Siddha Sri Jagadis Das Baba. Jagadish Das Baba was very much impressed by his bhakti bhav and extraordinary intelligence. He asked him to study the Shastras from Pandit Baba. Pandit Baba took special interest in him and began to teach him. In due course, he acquired mastery over Srimad Bhagavatam, Sat Sandarbha, 
and the other Bhakti Shastras. Pandit Baba then asked him to take up one book after another and deliver discourses on it in the presence of sadhus who had again started coming to him in the evening. His discourses began to attract large crowds and became a regular part of Baba's routine in the evening. Priyasharan Baba also was young when he came to Vrindavan. He was a, uh, a student at Varanasi and came to Vrindavan on a short visit. But on meeting Pandit Baba, he felt so much drawn by him that he never went back. Although he was already initiated in Nimbarka Sampradaya, he accepted him as his Shiksha Guru and began to do bhajan under his guidance. Baba guided him according to the mode of worship and meditation prevalent in the Nimbarta Sampradaya. Just as Goranga Das rose to be a famous Siddha Mahatma and a leader of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, Priya Sharan Baba rose to be an eminent Mahatma of the Nimbarta Sampradaya. About this time also came Kripa Sindhu Das Baba. He endured himself so much to Baba by his devotion to him that he accepted him as his lifelong companion and servant. He made good progress in bhajan under Baba's guidance. He became so advanced and so much attracted to Baba inwardly that he could know his mental condition even when he was away at some distance. Once Baba was ill, he became so weak that he could not speak. He felt thirsty and asked for water by saying, ah, ah, which the people by his side could not understand. Kripa Sindhu had at that time gone out from Madhukari. He also began to feel very thirsty. He drank water a number of times but the thirst could not be quenched. He understood intuitively that Baba was thirsty. Hastily, he returned to Baba and gave him water. His thirst was automatically quenched along with Baba's. Baba had severe toothache. A doctor was called to extract the teeth. The doctor asked Baba, which tooth aches, Baba? I do not know, replied Baba. The doctor laughed and said, Then who knows, Baba? Kripasindu knows. Kripasindu pointed out the teeth. In 1918, Pandit Baba had influenza. He was brought to Vrindavan for treatment. For eight years, he lived in Vrindavan at different places. 
From 1926, he began to live in Dowdy's Bagicha, where he lived until the end. Vishnu Das came to Baba when he had shifted to Dowdy's Bagicha. He was at that time only 14 years old. He was sent by his guru, Sri Yadunandan Das Babaji of Suryakund, to serve Pandit Baba in his old age and to do bhajan under his guidance. He came all the way from Suryakund to Vrindavan on foot. Because the day was very hot, he got fever on the way. When he reached Daoji's Bagicha, the fever was so high that he lay down near the well. Baba came out Rade, I think the basement fell out a little bit. Let's wait a couple of minutes. The electricity went on and off. Thank you, Gopika Didi. Jai Rade. Oh. Mi sa che non c'è connessione. È fermato tutto. È andata via la corrente a Brindava. Ah, eh sì, completamente. Peccato. Eh. Peccato. It's, it's all internet connection because Guru Dev also fell out. Only I'm on mobile, that's why. No, no. Ha detto Gopika che tutti brindavano, è saltata la connessione a tutti, meno che a lei che sta sul telefonino.
Jai Ho, but now you're on mute, Sridharvaya. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we just stopped, we did not continue, so we'll just start again from where we stopped. The hand once held. Ci dar mi senti, scusa. Puoi dirmi a che pagina sei arrivato? E se eh, puoi ridarmi. Siamo rimasti lì, 174, alla fine la terz'ultima riga. And I have to set eh, the name, Maria. Okay. Potete ridarmi la, la stanza dell'italiano perché l'ho persa. No, Grazie. No. Siamo, scusa. No, she has another name. Yes, ah, no, it's just Madurez, okay. Posto. Okay. So, for those who have the book, we just uh, are still there. Page 174. At the end. Third line before the end. I don't know if it's in English. The hand once held by Baba was never left. Vishnu Das remained with Baba until the end, following him like a shadow wherever he went. Vishnu Das Baba gained much from Baba's company. See? Si. Yeah. Baba used to be absorbed in Lila even when he went out for Madhukari with Vishnudas. His inner experience was sometimes transferred to Vishnudas like an electric current on account of his touch because he often held his arm or shoulder while going and coming. One day, in the month of June, Baba was returning to his kutir after Madhukari with Vishnu Das, his left hand resting upon his right shoulder. Suddenly, on the way, Vishnu Das experienced that the environment had changed. The hot wind of June had turned into cool and soothing breeze of winter, and the atmosphere was filled with the sweet smell of kadamba flowers of spring. Vishnu Das seemed to be transported into a state of bliss. He said, Baba, what is this? Baba said, By Radharani's grace, you have been given a glimpse of the real nature of Vrindavan. Vrindavan is celestial. It only appears to be terrestrial. In Vrindavan, all the seasons coexist and serve Radha Krishna <clears throat> according to their wish. When a sadhaka's heart is purified by bhajan, he sees the spiritual Vrindavan and the Lila that eternally goes on here. Thakur Kushalsina was a big Jagiradhara of Rajasthan. Jagiradhara, I think this Jagiradhara, not Jagiradhara. This is the A final text. Uh, Jagiradhara, I don't know. Anyone knows? Jagiradhara. Okay. 
was a big Jagiradar of Rajasthan and the Chief Justice of Jaipur High Court. Hmm. He was also very learned, religious, fearless, and strong-willed. He resigned the post of Chief Justice and came to Baba with the intention of renouncing everything and becoming a sadhu. He requested Baba to give him Vesha, Vaishnav Sanyas. Baba said, you need not renounce. Is it not possible to do bhajan as a householder? My days are gone. Bedtime is now coming. Sadhus will do everything that is done by Agriyasta. They will build palatial buildings, keep bank accounts, and live luxuriously. It is better to stay at home and do bhajan quietly. Thus, you will not be known as a saint and nobody will come to disturb you. <laughs> Kushal Sinaji gave up the idea of becoming a sadhu. He used to come to Vrindavan once in a month or two and return to Jaipur after living in Baba's company for some time. Thakur Arisina was the Jagaridar of Nimonia in Jaipur state. Like Kushal Sinaji, he also regarded Baba as his guru and used to come to him for satsang. Once he said to Baba, Baba, my wife is seriously ill. Astrologers have predicted that her stars are bad and she will die soon. The doctors have also lost all hope for her. Kindly advise what she should do in her last days for her salvation. Baba said, let her read Srimad Bhagavatam. Her stars will become favorable. The stars are unfavorable only to the people who are not devoted to the Lord. They are friendly and serviceable to those who are devoted to the Lord. But she's too weak to be able to read Bhagavatam, said Sri Hari Sinaji. Then you can read to her. Thakur Hari Sina started reading Bhagavatam to her. The stars actually turned in her favor. She became all right and is alive until this day. Rangopal Goswami came to Vrindavan from Calcutta every year and read Srimad Bhagavatam and other Bhakti scriptures before Baba for a month. Rangopal Goswami is our Param Gurudev of our Param Gurudev of Radha Gandhi Das Bhaji. Sorry, Gurudev of Param Gurudev of Radha Gurudev Das Bhaji. Rangupal Goswami. Rangupal Goswami is the Gurudev of our Param Gurudev of Radha Gurudev Das Bhaji. Yeah, and that's really. Rangupal Goswami came to Vrindavan from Calcutta every year and read Srimad Bhagavatam and other Bhakti scriptures before Baba for a month. Once 
even before the scheduled time of his arrival, Baba began to make anxious inquiries about him from everyone who came. People were surprised and said, Baba, why are you so anxious? He will come at a scheduled time in the afternoon. It is only about 12 o'clock now. But Prangopal came one day late because there was a train collision at Bamarawi and hundreds of people traveling in the same train in which he was traveling died. The compartment in which he and his party were traveling was safe, while the compartments just before and after were completely crushed. When Prangopal arrived in Vrindavan, he said that Baba's anxiety has saved him and his, yes, has saved him and his party. Otherwise, how could this compartment remain safe when those before and after it were crashed? Rangopal Goswami was famous for his learning and mastery exposition of the Shastras. He was generally regarded as the final authority on all religious matters. Whenever anyone had any doubt or difficulty, he approached Prangopal Goswami for solution. But when Prangopal Goswami himself had any doubt or difficulty, he sought ad the advice of Baba. Baba invariably solved his difficulty. Many times, the difficulty was solved merely by going to Baba and without actually referring it to him. His mere presence was enough to infuse intuitively into his mind the right solution. Even more mysterious than this was the manner in which Baba once solved the difficulty of Gorangadas Babaji relating to the commentary of the Sutra, Anandamayo of Yasat. At that time, Baba was living in a cave at Raman Rehi, which is known as Madan Mohan Kitibari. Gurangadas went and expressed his difficulty to Baba from outside the cave. He heard Baba giving the solution to him from inside. So qua. Eh, cas. Bhakti, shall we go for a bed? Scusate. Yeah, okay. No matter. <laughs> wow, nice. <laughs> he then asked Gorangadas, <laughs> have you understood? <clears throat> yes, Baba, said Gorangadas. But when Gorangadas was returning from his kutir, he was surprised to see Baba coming from the opposite direction with Amulaka Ram Shastri. Gurangadas said, Baba, I have just been to your cave. I had some difficulty with a sutra, and you solved it. How is it that I now see you here? Baba parried the question and said, 
Many Siddha saints live in Vrindavan who are invisible. They have the Sarakas in their difficulty unnoticed. Pandit Baba was a living example of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Trinadapi Sunichana Sloka, according to which one should be humble like a blade of grass and respect everybody without desiring to be respected by anyone. Whenever he went to a religious gathering in which Katha or Kirtan was going on, he sat behind everyone else. No one had the courage to request him to request him to take a forward seat. He never allowed anyone to touch his feet. A resident of Bihar who suffered from severe stomach ache was told by someone in a dream, if you rub the dust of Pandit Baba's feet, your disease would be cured. He also gave him the address of Pandit Baba. The man came to Vrindavan. He met Pandit Baba in Bankandi when he was returning to Iskutir after Madhukari. He wanted to touch his feet, but Pandit Baba rebuked him and did not let him touch his feet. The man felt very much mortified and disappointed. Someone advised him to see Kripasindu Baba. Kripasindu Baba advised him to take a pinch of dust from Baba's footprint when he went out for shelter, nature's call, next morning. He did the same. He was cured of the disease immediately after rubbing the dust of Baba's feet on his forehead. Another man of Bihar who was suffering from the same disease also came to Baba. He said, Baba, I have come from Bihar. I am suffering from a bad stomach disease. If you kindly let me have the dust of your feet, I am sure I will be cured, Baba said. The disease will be cured not by taking the dust of my feet, but by giving me the dust of your feet. As he said this, he took the dust of his feet and rubbed it on his forehead. This man's disease was also immediately cured. <laughs> Once a man Once a man who saw Ram Das Babaji Maharaj of Padbari Ashram, Calcutta, touching the feet of Pandit Baba, said to him, If you can allow a great saint like Ram Das Babaji to touch your feet, why can't you allow us? Baba replied, Ram Das Babaji is a Mahatma. Whether he touches my feet or asks me to touch his, in either case, I have to acquiesce. 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 I consent. I consent, sir. Yeah. Acquiesce. No. Consent. 
So I agree. Like, uh-huh. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I agree. So I agree. Baba was generally courteous to the visitors. But when someone went to him with some worldly proposition or did something which was against the Vaishnava rules of conduct, he became furious. Once a Raja came to him in his usual dress with all his retinue. He brought with him a purse full of gold mothers. But he kept the purse before Baba and sat down. Baba asked, What is this? Some gold mohurs, Baba. What is mohurs? Ornaments or something. Yeah. Some gold mohurs, Baba. You can use them as you like, replied the Raja. You want to see what is more? Baba said, They are of no use to me. You give them to someone else. But I have brought them for you, Baba. You have to take them. The Raja said in a somewhat dictatorial tone. Baba became furious. He showered a volley of abuses upon him and asked him to quit. Still the Raja persisted. Baba then shouted, If you do not leave at once with your purse, I will break my head. He was about to beat his head against the ground when the Raja stood up, took the purse and went away. The Raja was friendly with a Rajabasi Pandit. He narrated the whole story to him and said, What kind of a Siddha Mahatma is he? I wanted to do some service to him, but he suddenly vituperated. Which means? Which means? It means that he got angry. Vituperated and gave me a thousand abuses. What business had he to insult me like this? The Brajabashi said, The fault is yours. What you thought was service to Baba was actually disservice to him. You persisted in this service. Therefore, Baba became angry. You have committed an offense against him, and by doing so, you have invited the wrath of the Lord, who never excuses anyone for an offense committed against his devotee. You can be freed from the offense if you go with me to Baba and do as I say. If you do that, you will also see how kind hearted and courteous he see he is. The Raja agreed to do as the Brajabasi advised him. He went along with him to Baba the next day. As advised by him, he did not take his attendance with him and did not put on the royal dress. He went like an ordinary man with tilak on his forehead, pulsi kanti round his neck, and a rosary bag in his hand, which made him look like a Vaishnav devotee. Both he and the Brajabasi Pandit performed Dandavat before Baba and sat down. After Baba had inquired about the Pandit's welfare, the Pandit said, 
I am the I am told that the Raja caused much annoyance to you yesterday. I am sure he will come to grief for the offense he committed. Baba said, No, no, he did not commit any offense. He was very good. Although a Raja, he heard my abuses without saying anything. I abused him for his own good. If I had accepted his purse and used it in the service of the Vaishnavas, it would have poisoned their mind. Besides, they would have been harassed by thieves and leopards. The Raja would have, would have had to suffer on account of his responsibility in bringing about that, that state of affairs. The Raja was moved to hear this. He fell upon Baba's feet and said, Baba, I am that foolish Raja. Kindly excuse me for the offense committed by me. Once, Burangadas Babaji went to Radhakund. He was to stay there for the night and return the next morning. He was persuaded by a sadhu of Baal Sampradaya to stay at night with him. His real intention was to convert him to his faith in which the company of a woman was an essential part of sadhana. He treated him well, gave him nice things to eat and arranged for his bed. When he was sleeping, he felt the soft touch of a woman massaging his feet. He suddenly got up, rebuked the lady and the saddle and left for another place. The sadhu feared that sooner or later Gurangadas will report the matter to Pandit Babaji and it would become impossible for him to stay in Raja. He thought that Pandit Baba would probably not give credence to his report if he poisoned his mind against him beforehand. He went to him the next morning and said, Baba, you think that Guranga Das is a good sadhu. You do not know that he secretly keeps the company of women. Baba could not tolerate this. He was wild with rage. He burst out, You, devil, you have the cheek to malign a great saint like Goranga Das. You do not know what the consequence will be. You will die the death of a barking dog. Go. I have said you will die the death of a dog. Soon after, he was beaten by a mad dog and died barking like a dog. Baba's Varagya was unparalleled. The only possessions he had in his kutir were langoti, which is a small piece of cloth worn over privates. Kopi, the Kopi. <laughs> Bahir Bas, Loi Cloth, Karaba, Ayrton Pop, and some books. If anything besides this was brought and kept in his kutir by anyone, it became a victim on his rod and was thrown out. Once during summer season, Priya Sharan Baba 
brought a new pitcher full of water and kept it inside the kuti. Baba saw it on returning from Madhukari. Immediately, he brought it outside and smashed it. He asked Priyasharam, Why did you bring it? Priyasharam replied, I brought it because it is too hot and you repeatedly ask for water. I know, you brought it because you had to draw water every time from the well. Fool that you are, you do not know that it will cause disturbance in my bhajan by inviting others to drink water. Once Baba was ill, he was advised by the Vaidya to take Makar Vaja. Sham Sundar Das, a Vaishnav attendant of Baba, used to ionize Makar Vaja with the help of a karala, a bolt shaped pot of stone, and lorry a long and round piece of stone bar for grinding medicine in Kerala. If Baba came to know that Avaishnav was taking so much trouble for him, he would have stopped taking Makar Vaja. So Shamasundar did ionization when Baba was out for Madhukari and kept the Karala and Lodi always concealed from him. Somehow the Lori broke and Shama Sundar asked Kushal Sinaji to bring another. One day Baba saw Kushal Sinaji giving something wrapped in a piece of paper to Shama Sundar. After Kushal Sina had gone, he asked Shamasundar what he had brought. Shamasundar said, Nothing, Baba, only a small lorry for grinding Makar Vaja. Baba stood up. His face was red with anger. He picked his karava in the Madhukari bag and said, only a small lorry. You live here with the lorry. I am off. As he was about to leave, Shamasundar fell at his feet and said, Baba, I have committed an offense. Kindly excuse me, otherwise I shall die. Then go and return the lorry immediately. Shamasundar immediately went and returned the lorry to Kushal Sinaji. Then Baba's anger subsided. Baba took Madhukari only from the Brajabasis. Even from the Brajabasis, he never took anything brought from outside Braj. Once someone brought Parabala a vegetable in a large quantity for Narahari Das Babaji, the Mahatma of Radhakund. Narahari Das sent some Parabala to Pandit Baba. Pandit Baba said to the man who had brought Parabala, Tell Narahari Baba that he should not send me anything brought from outside Raja. A visitor who was present said, Baba, what harm if you take something brought from outside? Baba replied, Do you do bhajan? If you did bhajan, you would have realized what harm is done by taking anything brought from outside. An ordinary person may find it difficult 
to comprehend this. But Baba was not an ordinary person. He was a saint whose heart was pure and totally engrossed in Braja and Braja Lila. There was no place in it for anything that was not part and parcel of Braja Lila or which was in any way associated with anything outside Braja. Any such thing appeared to him unacceptable, like a black spot on a white sheet. Baba also did not take the prashad of temples, in which service of the deities was done with the financial aid of a worldly minded person. Once, Kushal Sinaji brought the prashad of Govindaji from Jaipur along with a garland of flowers used by Govindaji. Baba wore the garland with pleasure, but he took only a particle of the prashad to avoid a parada and distributed the rest among the Vaishnavas. He said to Kushal Sinaji, Never bring Govindaji's prashad again. Govindaji alone can digest it. Govindaji's seva was financed by the Maharaj of Jaipur. Again, we may not understand how the prashad financed by a person given to worldly enjoyments is not good for the spiritual health of the sadhaka. But this is a fact which has been verified by the sadhakas times out of number. The subtleties of the spiritual world are beyond the comprehension of our material minds. If Baba was knowingly or unknowingly given anything to eat which did not come from the right source, he could easily direct it on account of the subtle disturbance it created in his mind. Subsequent inquiries about the source always confirm his intuition. Once Raja Raja Rishi Banamali Rai Bahadura sent the prashad of his deity Sri Vinodi Lal to Baba. Baba took only a particle of that also and distributed the rest among others. At night, Vinodi Lal said to him in a dream, why did, you, why did you not take my prashad? My seva is done out of the earnings of my own property and not Banamali's rice. This was correct. The property out of the income of which Binodilal's seva was done stood in his own name. The next morning, Baba went all the way from Govardhan to Vinod Lala's temples in Rindama on foot and back for his prashad. He ate the prashad to his fullest capacity. After that, he never gave Vinod Lala an opportunity to make a similar complaint. Like any other Siddha Mahatma, Baba had the capacity to perform miracles, but he tried as far as possible not to use it for fear of becoming known as a Siddha Purusha. But if circumstances compelled, compelled him to do so, he tried to explain the miracle away 
in some way or the other. Once Rangopal Goswami sent him 200 rupees for feeding the Vaishnavas in connection with the death anniversary of his mother. Accordingly, Baba arranged for a feast to which a limited number of Vaishnavas were invited. The same day came Ram Das Babaji and his party of Bengali Vaishnavas from Calcutta. Ram Das Baba sent word to Pandit Baba that he would go to his ashram with his party in the evening and perform Gaur Gadadhar Kirtan. Baba's standing instruction to Kripa Sindhu Das Baba was that any Vaishnava who happened to come to the ashram when a mutsav or feast was going on, he must be fed along with the other Vaishnavas. Therefore, extra food for 10 or 12 persons was always prepared. But in Ram Das Babaji's party, there were about 300 Vaishnavas. They could not all be fed with the limited amount of food that was prepared. Kripasindu Baba expressed his concern in this connection to Pandit Baba. Pandit Baba treated the problem lightly. He said, do not worry, Bengali Vaishnavas eat very little. This did not relieve Pipasindu Baba of his anxiety. But what could he do? He resigned himself to fate. However, in the evening, when the feast was over, he was surprised to find that everybody had eaten. Still, still there was a small quantity of food left. Baba said to Kripa Sindhu, didn't I say that the Bengali Vaishnava is eat very little? Kripa Sindhu Baba did not say anything. But he laughed within himself at Baba's cleverness. Gradually, Baba became very old and weak. It was not possible for him to go out from Madhukari. He began to live on fruit juice. But though physically weak, he was mentally alert and his bhajan went on as usual. He got up at two o'clock in the morning and continued to sit in Japa and Lila Smaran until two o'clock in the afternoon. Nam Japa had become a part of his life. He continued all the time without any break. Even while asleep, he was sometimes heard chanting the name. His finger, which remained outside the bag of rosary while doing Japa, had become so straight and stiff that he could not be spent and used even at the time of eating. Slowly, Baba's intake of fruit juice also became less and less, and his sweetness went on increasing. He remained mostly confined to bed in his couture. 
when he wanted to go out of the kuti, his attendant carried him on his bed. Once, while, while he was being brought out in this manner, he chanted humorously, Ramanam Satyahe, the name of Lord alone is true. Customarily, this line is chanted aloud by the carriers of a dead body when it is carried to the funeral pyre. Although the line was chanted by Baba in good humor, Tripa Sindhu thought that he had hinted at his hand, which was very near. On hearing that Baba's condition had worsened, Kushal Sinaji and Hari Sinaji came from Jaipur. They called Avaidya from Calcutta and treatment was started. But what could the Vaidya do if Baba himself did not want to leave? After a few days, Kushal Sinaji and Hari Sinaji went back to Jaipur. But while taking leave of Baba, Hari Sinaji prayed to him mentally that he and Kushal Sinaji be informed before the apprehended and came. His silent prayer was noted by Baba. Baba asked Kripa Sindhu Das to call Gadadhar Das Babaji, Kirtaniya, uh, to call Gadadhar Das Babaji Kirtaniya and his party from Govardhan and arrange for one month's Astakalya Lila Kirtan in the ashram. <coughs> this was another indication to Kripa Sindhu Baba that Pandit Baba was preparing for the end. He made all arrangements for the kirtan. The kirtan went on for a month and Baba remained all the time absorbed in Lila. One evening, when all those who were close to Baba were sitting around him, he said, when I leave the body, you leave the bagicha and go elsewhere. Perhaps he said this to ensure that none of his attendants took possession of the bagicha after him. Someone asked, Baba, your samadhi? No samadhi. Your bhajan will be my samadhi. And what about utsav? Celebration. No utsav. That day, all of you bring Madhukari, sit together and eat. Then he turned his eyes towards the young Sarakas of his ashram and said, Save these boys from woman. The next day was Fragastami. <laughs> the next day was Radhastami. Baba fasted as usual. On Ekadasi, again he fasted. Pipashindu Baba insisted on both the days that he might take some pancham reach or at least some water because he was getting weaker and weaker with every fast, but in vain. On greater insistence, he said with folded hands, Please, do not break my fast. After a couple of days, he asked Kripa Sindhu to call Kushal Sinaji and Hari Sinaji by wire. Kripa Sindhu did not pay any heed to this. 
because he thought Baba's condition was not yet too serious. The next day, Baba asked again, Have you sent the telegram to Jaipur? After this, Baba went into Samadhi. The telegram was sent. On Dvit, uh, Dvitya, the second day of Krishna Paksha, of the month of Ashvina, of Ashvina, Baba suddenly spoke out. He said to Kripa Sindhu, See, see, Priya and Priyatam, Radhing Krishna, have come. Priya and Priyatam are alone. For your Manjari is Faru, Siddha body is also there. Asked Kripa Sindhu. Baba replied, My Manjari is Faru is also there. On Chaturthi, the fourth day of the month, Baba asked Kripa Sindhu to prepare for him a bed of the Raja, holy dust of Vrindavan. Everybody was shocked to hear this. The bed was prepared and Baba was laid on it. Just then arrived Kushal Sinaji and Hari Sinaji from Jaipur. Kushal Sinaji had brought Govindaji's Prashadi Mala garland with him. He put the mala round Baba's neck. The moment he did this, Baba left the body. Govindaji came in the form of the mala and took him away. Jai Pandit Sri Ramakrishna Das Babaji Ki Radha Radha Gurudev Are you there? Listening Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yeah. So nice classes. Please, all request. Very nice, very special. Please. <laughs> Nature of saintly person. All Babaji will see different, different. And Sanyasi will see in one way. All Baba is different. Some are very sweet, very angry, very kind, very siddha. Very special it is there. But they all are like and great, great because they become manjari. They are practicing in manjari Radhe, Shridhavaya, can, can you close that one to us? Good day. What are you doing? Yeah, Ram Goranga Das Babaji, Priya Charan Das Babaji. I was small, I see them. I listen the name of them. Yeah. 
Ram Krishnas Babaji, all there. <coughs> Very <coughs> elevated so. I think so much. I got the chance. They come back. No, somebody is no. I am. I am. Yeah. yeah. So nice. Bruder, can I uh, make one question? Yeah. Here, there were a few examples where uh, it was described a deep internal connection between Baba and his uh, disciples, students. And uh, how, like, all the feelings, even material feelings, like on the material body, illness, mm -hmm. things were also fed by the disciples, by the closest disciple, also thirsty, and it was described how that they were just like the shadow. So I want to ask, uh, this is the requirement. We also say, right, that Manjaris are shadow of Radhika. So I want to ask uh, that first, we have to be shadow of, uh, in worthy of our uh, Gurudev, Rumanjari, then anything also with Radhika can be understood. If you can we are, say something like this. We are in the Manjari of Radhika. That, that way, my Gurudev is navigating me, navigating me. Navigation. Who will guide how to serve Radhika? So, our closeness, our mercy to be always with Radhika, this is the help of Gurudev. So, they are all Guru Manjari and Swamini, they are all one. They feel each other very one. Oneness. You see, Raghunath Das Swami say, all this bite to your lip means uh, Guru Manjari is telling. Guru Manjari telling to the Manjari, Raghunath Das Goswami. And then he prayed to Radha Rani. Because this mercy comes from Guru Manjari to become servant of Radhika. Guru Manjari Kripa, oneness with the Guru Manjari inside, is spiritual oneness, help us to connect with Radha Rani. And she is always guiding how to keep this connection. It's a divine connection. Manjari, what is the meaning of Manjari? who is physically beyond physical, constitutional position, divine position. I need to because I can only that is Manjari. So imagine you, that you are trying to Manjari is a mental, conceived body. Conceive body. Okay. Mentally conceive body. Uh, mentally means my mind is in different place. How it will conceive? Mind are working in different, different directions. Please, no love. Conceive. Conceiving. Conceive means mind is totally fixed, one point. Then we conceive. And what is my constitutional position is a condensed. When my thinking becomes condensed is my constitutional it should be condensed. Thinking has to be condensed. For one point. 
But how, how do we do become uh, shadows of Guru Manjari Guru in the practical way, like how our practice should be? Friendly person recommends it should be through the bhajan kriya. Bhajan means chanting, and kriya means me mental. Calculation also in that point. Not that I am chanting something and thinking something. Kriya has to be one pointed. That is bhajan kriya. I chant and I think something else. This is not a bhajan. Bhajan not namabhas. Kriya means my behavior is thinking in same point. That is Kriya. My mind is how many places going, that has to stop. And how to control? The bhajan will control that. When we fix my mind in bhajan, and then Kripa comes this is the desire has to be there, and then mercy comes after that. Mercy is very important. Without mercy, no realization comes. By my efforts, not possible. Mercy is important. These are very important points. Thank you. Very nice class. Thank you, Sila. My good sisters. Your camera is off. No. Camera. Also, Gopinath, come. He will also share. Give my. Guru Manjari. Sorry. That is. How to be uh, very, very nice uh, sharing. Thank you so much. Uh, and I was not able to listen to all of it, but uh, I don't know, maybe Gopika, you can say what Guru <laughs> said. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for this class. It's very, very beautiful. Thank you. You please say something, Shridhar Bhaiya. I love you. Daddy, I love you. Daddy. <laughs> So we start now. We turn this now. It's uh, eight minutes after six. So we have another. I mean, many others, but the next <laughs> one story is a uh, part with another. Yes. Guru, okay. Read another. Read one more, Guru. Yeah, yeah. Loud. Sri Manohar Das Maharaj. Speak out. Sri Manohar Das Babaji. Manohar Das Babaji's earlier name was Mahendra. <laughs> 1847, in a village called Madhapura, in district Nadia. 
His mother, Priyari Sundari, died when he was six years old, and father, Sri Bolenad Adhikari, when he was 13. After the death of his father, he took Diksha Mantra from Nan, uh, Sri Nanda Kishore Goswami, a descendant of Sri Advitacharya. Mahendra was fond of learning from his early childhood. He completed his primary education in Atola in Madhapura. <laughs> After initiation, he went to Navadvip for studying Sanskrit grammar, Alamkar, Nyaya, and Darshan. First under Vipin Chandra Bhattacharya, and then under Sri Krishna Chandra Smriti Ratna. He took Vesha from Sri Svarup Das Babaji of Bana Akana of Navadvip. After Vesha, he was named Manohar Das. While in Navadvip, Manohar Das Baba had the good fortune of enjoying the company of Siddha Sri Chaitanya Das Baba, Pandit Narutam Das Babaji Maharaj of Bana Kana of Navadvip and Siddha Sri Bhagavan Das Baba of Kalna. In 1881, he went to Vrindavan. For five years, he studied Bhakti Shastras from Sri Gopilal Goswami Prabhu of Sri Radharaman Temple and availed himself of the company of Siddha Mahatmas like Balaram Das Babaji of Janu Mandal, Jagadish Das Baba of Kalidaha, and Nityananda Das Baba of Madan Mohan Thakura. After that, he practiced bhajan in Kusum Sarovar, Kamyaban, and Nandagram. In 1893, someone asked him in a dream to go and live in Govinda Kund at the feet of Giriraj. Since then, he began to live in a kuti under a banyan tree in a garden in Govinda Kunda. At this time, Siddha Sri Ramakrishna does. Pandit Baba lived in Puchari, about one and a half miles from Govinda Kund. Often, when he went for Madhukari to village Anaura, he also visited Manohar Das Baba in Govinda Kund and enjoyed talking with him on various topics relating to the Lila of Radha Krishna. In 1915, Manohar Das Baba built a cave in Govinda Kund, in which he lived and practiced Baba throughout the day and came out only in the evening for Madhukari. He did Nilasmaran and Nam Japa all the time. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> what is what is you say here that he did Lilasmaran and Nam Japa all the time. So, uh, Lilasmaran happened during also Nam Japa, but here is like kind of differentiating. With the he is doing Lilasmaran, then Nam Japa is 
he cannot do. When Leela's manan is stopped, then Nam Japa starts. Hmm. Yes, to con- keep that continuous, he starts chanting. So Nam Japa chanting the name? The but- name, chanting name, again to come in Leela's manan. Okay, so in Lila Smarana, one becomes fully stopped, like from the bodily activities, let's say, even chanting the. the uh, chanting yeah. The Baba. Oh, we cannot chant that. Lila Smarana, other will think that you are sleeping. You cannot move, body, body consciousness gone. Thank Japa will be there, but maybe movement is there or no movement is there. Mm. When they come out from the large one, then Namaste. Read the line. He did Lila Smaran and Nam Japa all the time. Lila Smaran, then Nam Japa. That is our constitutional position. If we not do, again and again we have to take birth for that. He slept very little, perhaps, or, jump one line. Uh, Japa and Smarana continued even at night. You see? Japa and Aspara is a when we come to Sadak Deha again to go in in Saruk Siddha Deha we have to chanting has to be continued to go inside if you come in bodily consciousness this body will bring you out. So the absorption and uh, revelation of Lila Smaran come during Tamjapa, like when yeah. Lila Smaran comes, then suddenly comes. And that the Bajan Kriya, then Anarthani Vritti. Bhajan Kriya bring Anarthani Vritti. Then Nistha coming, for faith. Nistha in Istadev, Gurudev, in his Sarupa ways, and your Sarup will come, and this Thai name coming. We cannot chant. We do so many activities, but chanting is not tasteful. Because the goal is different. Self-realization is not my goal, then test not come. So I create an Arthandi. Even in Bhajan, if the Kriya is outside, is an Artha we are creating. Nama Bhas will happen. Religious practice on I'm chanting and thinking something else. That anartha is 
not going. It's a new creation I'm creating. Or I'm giving energy to that material thing where mind is good. Is I am not free from another. Then they start coming. So only Bhaja can make you anartha nivet, nivetti and nishtha. And Kripa, Kripa is important for that. Without mercy, it not happening. Taste will never come. Association, Sangha and Kripa. My slow Kripa. <laughs> Guru Kripa, Radha Rani is to their Kripa. When she gives Kripa, all they give Kripa. Radha. Repeat that hard enough, no less than seven lakhs times a day. <laughs> we, we ate only roti, bread. <laughs> With soup, we fair, we ate only roti bread, <laughs> with soup prepared from the leaves of neem tree. Later, he gave up roti and took only milk in very little quantity. He avoided the company of people and spoke very little. He was too humble. He bowed down to all and sundry. Sundry means for? He seems like various, various people. And never allowed anyone to touch his feet. He always thought ill of himself. His absorption in bhajan was so deep that he was almost unaware of the body. Sadhus in Govardhan used mosquito net to protect themselves from mosquitoes. But when they insisted on his using a mosquito net, he said, mosquito does not do any harm to us. It only helps us in bhajan by keeping away sleep. <laughs> Once it was so cold in Braja that the temperature reached below freezing point. Baba had only a kanta, rags or shreds patched together to cover himself. At night, his body shivered and created obstruction in bhajan. 
getting angry with the body, he went and plunged into the icy cold water of the Govinda Kun. Navadvip Das Baba, who lived nearby, asked him why he plunged into the Kunda at night. He replied, the body has begun to ask for more clothes. It must be disciplined. <laughs> Now I believe that Baba said, in severe cold, it is necess uh, necessary to use a kilt. Vairagis, who have renounced the word, do not use kilt, retorted Baba. <laughs> Baba's whole heart. Sì, sì, Maduria, sì, ti sentiamo. Sì, sì, mi sa che non c'è più. Ok, grazie. He also wrote a book on Harinam titled Namaratna Mala. Once a Vaishnav asked him how to get over the difficulties and obstacles in bhajan. He replied, One must be firm in bhajan. To a man who practices bhajan steadfastly and with all his heart and soul, staking for it his life and everything else, the obstacles begin to appear as illusory as the horns of a hair. The Lord himself makes the path of bhajan smooth for him. But this does not happen in a day. Both perseverance and patience are necessary. Manohar Das Baba used to, stay, used to say that bhajan is not possible without complete surrender at the feet of the Lord and total dependence upon Him. It is only in the state of utter dependence on Him that one enjoys the calmness of mind which is necessary for bhajan. A mind which is disturbed by various kinds of worldly anxiety is not fit for bhajan. He defined bhajan as a state in which the mind is constantly absorbed in the meditation of the Lord and revolves to the thought of everything else as to poison. Sri Manavardas Baba Ji Ki Jai Jai Hol Vaishnava Ki Jai Jai Shri Radhe Thank you everyone Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.